All right, so today we're going to talk about the Agile through the scope fully covered esophageal stent. So in the event that you need to utilize the stent, uh, there's really three things that you absolutely have to have. Number one is a therapeutic upper or a therapeutic EGD scope or a dual channel scope or a bleeder scope, whatever the language is, you need the therapeutic upper scope with two channels. Uh, the stent will only fit through the larger of the two working channels on the therapeutic upper scope. Also, uh, a good backup to have is an 035 by 450 um, ERCP guide wire, such as a Dream wire or a Jag wire. Um, and the other thing is we're going to need the esop Agile Esophageal Fully Covered Stent. So, when you open the package, inside you'll find more packaging. Inside that is the wrapping for the stent. The stent can be removed from the packaging. This end of the stent, um, a small amount of lubrication will be applied to the outside of the catheter. This catheter will be sent directly down the biopsy port, like we said, the larger of the two channels. Um, as the stent is sent down the scope, eventually the tip of the stent will exit the scope. Because this is a through the scope stent, we can physically watch deployment occur. Um, and the deployment is essentially a small amount of the stent is deployed and then the uh, EGD scope is withdrawn. More stent is deployed, the EGD scope is withdrawn. We always have to keep an eye out for our yellow transition zone. We do not want to completely deploy the stent until the yellow transition zone is in view, because if you've done that, that means you have completely deployed the stent inside the working channel of the scope. So always be cautious as you're speaking with your technician on, are we at the point of no return? Have we passed the point of no return? But essentially, we're always going to be withdrawing our EGD scope as we deploy the stent. That way we can watch the entire deployment of the stent. Uh, the nurse or technician assisting the physician, this handle, all of the, all of the stents that are coaxial deployment should be handled in this way. The back end of the handle should be pressed against the sternum. One hand should be placed on the white marking on the handle of the catheter. The other hand will grip the front portion of the deployment of the catheter. And this portion of the catheter will be pulled back toward the other hand. And as it is pulled back, we start to see the stent open. The outer portion of the catheter is traveling backwards, which is allowing the stent to deploy. The reason we keep our hand at this mark is so that we can't incidentally deploy more of the stent than we want to at any given time without running into our hand. When this portion of the catheter covers up the white mark, that is consistent with the point of no return on the stent. If at this point in time you're unhappy with the placement of the stent, you can always perform the reverse motion of deployment, resheath the stent, and then you can make adjustments to the placement of it. Um, this stent, although it's through the scope, also has fluoroscopic markings. Uh, there's five markings in this stent. There's the leading mark, the traveling marker, the 50% deployment mark, the point of no return, uh, and the trailing marker. Um, all of those can be seen on fluoroscopic visualization. But as you withdraw on the catheter and deploy the stent, for every inch that you deploy here, your physician is going to need to withdraw or pull back on the catheter that same amount to make sure that the stent stays in the exact same position. Once you've reached the point of no return, you should tell the physician I'm at the point of no return. If everyone is happy with the placement of the stent at that point in time, we would complete deployment, which means to continue to pull back until the stent opens fully. At that point in time, the catheter that was used to place the stent is withdrawn through the middle and the stent remains in the patient. There are pull strings on either end of the stent. Um, if a combo grasper or a rat tooth grasper uh, can be used to either reposition at the time of initial placement or 
uh, when it's time for the stent to be removed, a grasper will be utilized to grab a hold of the string, apply tension on it, reduce the diameter of the stent, and then the stent is removed from the patient.